Welcome back to the Caffeinated Traders Lounge. Today we are going to discuss keeping that trader's mindset. All right, so keeping our trading psychology in check while we're trading. You know, many of you may have already experienced this, maybe you're still going through it, but trading with live funds, it's really, really important to keep our emotions in check because money really does something to us psychologically. Um, so there's little things that we can do to actually help keep our emotions down and keep our performance up while we're trading. All right, so those uh, little tips and tricks is what we're gonna discuss today. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So the first one is going to be have a trade plan. All right, so the first thing to this is know why you're getting into your position. You know, what is your strategy? Are you using support and resistance? Are you using moving averages? Are you using Fibonacci? Are you using uh, different oscillators? You know, maybe a uh, divergence strategy. What is your actual reason to get into the trade? Because, you know, just going off intuition, just going off possibly some news that came out earlier, you know, maybe it was positive for the US dollar and now you're saying, oh, well, the news was good, so I'm gonna long the dollar. You're not going to have confidence in that position and that's really going to play with you psychologically. So you need to know why you're getting into your trade. This is very, very important. And this is the first step to anything that you start doing. All right. So the next part, know the different levels that you may want to take profit at. All right. Is there enough room for you to even take something out of the market? Um, you know, if, it's at a bottom and you're looking to go long off of it. Is there enough room before the next structure level for you to actually get a, get a trade out of it and take some money out of the market? Um, or are you going to be risking too much on that trade and have a really bad risk to reward ratio? Know the levels that you want to get out. Are you going to be taking partial profits as well? That's another topic that you need to discuss um, and look over with yourself. And if you want to actually know about taking partial profits, I actually just did a video on this. I'll link it up in uh, one of the notes up top there. But uh, this is very, very important. Um, are you going to be letting it run the whole way to your take profit or are you going to be take partials and where are you going to be taking partials? All right. So the next, uh, the next thing that we're going to look at is you need to know where your stop loss is going to be. You know, where are you going to get out if you are wrong on the trade and completely accept that fact. You know, you can't be, um, you can't be just putting your stop loss wherever because you're not going to have again, confidence in that. And it's going to lead to you wanting to move stop losses and, you know, take possibly a bigger loss than you even had to. All right, so step number two is proper position sizing. All right, so the first step to this is going to be know your risk tolerance and trade accordingly. Do you have a high risk tolerance where you can actually risk more percentage of your account or do you have a very low risk tolerance where you need to, you know, maybe risk 1%, maybe not even 1% per trade? Um, everybody's going to be different and everybody can handle their emotions a little bit differently while they're actually trading. So you need to know where you're at and trade accordingly, because if you don't, your emotions are going to be going crazy and you're going to be looking at every single tick that happens. And I'm telling you, you, you will mess up your trade. You are not going to let it work out in your favor. And, um, yeah, it'll definitely hinder on your performance on this trade and future trades to come. All right. Know your risk tolerance and trade accordingly. All right. So the second part to this is use a lot size you're actually comfortable with. You know, you need to base it on where you're at, like I said, with risk tolerance. Um, but you need to also, you know, you can't under leverage and you can't over leverage your trade because, you know, if you're over leveraging, then you're going to get very emotional while you're trading. And if your risk tolerance isn't at that point, 
because you don't have confidence in yourself and your abilities to trade, um, your, your emotions are going to be running wild and you will definitely get in the way if price starts moving against you and that loss builds up really quickly because you're over leveraged and the, you know, the lot size is too big for your account in a sense, because your emotions can't handle it. All right. Um, but you also don't want to under leverage either, because if you are, um, let's say, let's say you're trading maybe 10,000 units and, um, your account is big enough to technically be trading one lot, one full lot, right? You're going to be looking at that dollar amount that you've gained off, let's say 20, 30 pips as if it didn't even do anything to your account. So you're going to be looking at the dollar amount and thinking, well, I want it to go further, but Meanwhile, the trade actually did move 20, 30 pips, which, which is a significant amount, um, right? Like, let's say this happened in just an hour or two, 20, 30 pips in an hour or two is, it's a decent move and price is likely going to start retracing on you, right? So you need to actually be watching the pips rather than the price because, you know, if you're under leveraged, you're going to be looking at that dollar amount like it didn't even make a difference to your account. So you're going to hold it for too long. Price is going to come back against you. And then you're going to have a losing trade for no reason, which you could have taken something out of the market, but you didn't. But yeah, so if you actually want to learn a little bit about position sizing, I actually made a previous video on this. Um, I will post the link in a uh, note up here and I'll also put it in the description below where you can look at... Um, different ways and different uh, position sizes based on certain account sizes, all right? And how I personally, you know, look at position sizing based on where my stop loss is going to be, all right? So yeah, take a look at that video and uh, we'll move on to the next step. All right, so the third step we're gonna discuss is using proper stop loss placement. All right, so this is a very, very important part. Um, and this goes back to kind of having a trading plan and knowing where you're going to get out if you're wrong. All right, but putting it in a proper spot is very, very important. You don't want to be putting it too close or too far. Um, if it's too close, you're if price moves against you, you're going to be very tempted to move it further away. All right. Um, because you know, it, if the trade calls for 10, 20 pip stop loss and you just set it at five pips, just because you didn't want to lose too much money and you're being, you know, kind of cheap on your trade, um, you're, you're going to be very tempted and your emotions are going to be running wild because you don't even really want to lose that five pip stop loss, whatever amount that is, right? You really don't want to even want to lose that, but because it's too close, you're going to say, okay, well, I, I put it close. So I'll, I'll, I'll just move it now and I'll maybe, maybe move it to 10 pips instead, but that wasn't part of your plan, you know, actually plan the trade ahead of time. And then once price does actually move to that point, then you can accept where, where you're wrong, right? But you also don't want to be putting it too far because if it is too far, then you're going to be taking a bigger loss than you really need it to be. All right. So actually put it at a spot that is reasonable, you know, few pips below the previous low, few pips above the previous high, um, just enough for the trade to actually, you know, have some, some play there and let it, let it work in your favor. All right. But, um, yeah, don't put it too close. Don't put it too far. Set it at a place that you're actually comfortable with and leave it there. That is part of your plan. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Accept that move on to the next trade. All right. All right. So now the fourth thing we want to look at 
is going to be um, a combination of both position size and stop loss placement. All right, so stop loss distance and position size go hand in hand. Um, I do know that a lot of people, they use a standard lot size. Um, you know, they trade one lot consistently or they, um, they're consistently using a 20 pip stop loss. That's not really the best way to go about it because let's say you're trading a pound pair. They are a lot more volatile um, and 20 pips on the pound is like five pips on a different pair. It moves a lot more. Your average true range or your average daily range on the pound is like 100, 120 pips. Um, whereas the Aussie dollar is going to be like 60, 70 pips. So you need to know where you're actually going to be putting your stop loss based on the pair you're trading um, and trade accordingly to that. But you want to base your position size on how far or close your stop loss is going to be. So this goes back to putting your stop loss in a certain place that you are actually comfortable with and leaving it there. But now you need to actually set up your position size accordingly to that. All right. So the farther the stop loss, you know, you're going to need a lower position size because now your stop loss is more pips. Um, a lower position size will give you a, you know, you'll be risking less money on that trade. Cause like if you're risking, um, 20 pips, let's say, and you're trading one standard lot, a 20 pip stop loss is going to be $200. But let's say your next trade only requires a 10 pip stop loss. That's going to be a hundred dollars, a hundred dollar stop loss. So if you're comfortable with, uh, risking $200, let's just say on that 10 pip stop loss trade, you could actually double and trade two lots and still be risking $200. So cons be consistent with the amount you're risking based on where your stop loss is going to be. All right. So the farther the stop loss, the lower the position size, the closer the stop loss, the greater the position size you can actually trade. And like I said, um, that other video that I made about position sizing, that'll discuss that as well. So definitely check that out. Like I said, it'll be in the description below. All right. So the last and final step, you need to completely accept your losses. All right. So before you even get into the trade, you need to know that there is a chance you will be wrong on this trade and you need to accept that truth. All right. You know, not every trade is going to be a winner. doesn't matter how confident you are in it, how many um, confirmations you have, you know, you could be looking at, you know, it's on structure. We have divergence. It's, um, it's on the moving average as well. Like so many different things could be telling you that the trade is going to work in your favor, but price is going to do what it wants to do. All right. It's going to do what it wants to do. And you need to accept that. And if it loses, it loses, you know, not every trade is going to be a winner, but be confident in your strategy and your ability to bounce back on your next trades. All right. So this is going back to having a strategy and, you know, back tested it, know that over the long term, you will come out on top. All right. So just, you know, accept your losses before you even get into the trade, because if you don't, if you don't accept that certain percentage of your account, that dollar amount, however you want to look at it, if you don't accept it, you know, it's really going to, it's really going to play on your emotions and you're going to be watching every tick, like I said earlier, and hoping that if it's currently in a loss that it just bounces back and you're going to be basically praying to the trading gods that your trade works in your favor because you haven't accept or you have, you haven't accepted the amount that you put up in order to uh, take a chance and take a risk on this trade. All right. 
There's always going to be risk in trading, um, but you need to risk to make money. So accept that risk that you're taking. All right, so that's all we got for today, but I hope uh, these little tips and tricks really do help keep your emotions in check while trading and keep you in a positive mindset uh, because you know our emotions really can get the best of us at times. And especially when, like I said, money is involved, that really, really plays on us psychologically um, because no one wants to lose money. Let's be honest, no one wants to lose money, but you need to accept that there is a chance that you will lose money in trading. And that just, I mean, that's with everything, right? Anything you do, um, there's gonna be a risk involved. Um, even if you're starting a business, doing different things, you know, there's gonna be risks involved. So trading is no different than that, but you need to accept it, all right? That's the biggest thing, you need to accept those risks. All right, so that's it for this video. If you liked it, if you gained some value from it, give it a thumbs up, really appreciate that. Um, if you wanna see more, subscribe to my channel. I'll be throwing out a lot more content like this one, um, along with you know different trading strategies, different patterns, di different things. Um, check out some other videos I got. Um, if you like it, subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for stopping by. Take care, happy trading.